Hello, welcome to the All or Not podcast. Our official sponsors are KR Couriers and Transport Limited. This is a Northwest based courier company delivering all across the UK. They can assist in home moves and removals to large, heavy, and bulky items, collections, and drop offs. Fast, safe, and reliable deliveries. Please get in touch for a free quote. You'll find all the information within the description. Thank you. Hello everybody and welcome to the All or Not On Podcast with myself, the host Billy Moore and today's special guest, actor Bobby Schofield. Yes, Bill. Bobby, thanks for coming on, mate. Make sure you speak into that mic because we've got an audience out there that likes to hear the voice. Sound, I'll make sure that, uh, yeah, keep it up. So, Bobby, you're the, uh, you know, you're the next up-and-coming actor in Liverpool. Your dad's an actor. Yeah, you know, is an actor, yeah. A few people have mentioned you to me, so I thought it was only right to get you on. Yeah. You know, you, you're treading in the, the footsteps of uh, Stephen Graham, the likes of Jodie Comer and people like that. So, well in there, lad. Tell us, tell us. Fucking just plodding on, lad. You know what I mean? <laughs> just paying the bills. <laughs> tell, <laughs> us, tell us a little bit about yourself and where you come from and what it's all about. Uh, oh, well, I was born and bred in Kirby because you said you were, you, man, you didn't you fucking make polite, aren't you? I make polite, didn't I've you? Got, I've got family from Kirby. Oh, is it, yeah? Yeah, from um, Northwood. Yeah, you know, I'm, yeah, so I was yeah. born in, yeah, born and bred, well, I'm born in Fazakli. So, yeah, grew up in Northwood. Um, yeah, went to Overdale Primary School and then from there I went to Ruffy and then I got kicked out when I was about 14. Yeah. Uh, I brought a fucking pelican onto a fishing trip and just, yeah, I think that was enough. I think that was the end for me then, do you know yeah. what I mean? You got rid of me. Yeah, and then fucking went to like a naughty boys place for about a year uh, and then went back to normal school and then, yeah, just fucking, yeah, became a gardener and then decided to become an actor when I was about 17. But I don't know when I was dead young as well. I'd done like a little bit of acting. I'd done, done like a short film with my half fella. Um, the Reds and the Blues was that? Nah, it wasn't that. No, I was a fucking extra in that. I was with a stupid jester. That now it was this thing. It was this thing about um, this fucking ice cream man. You don't mind me swearing on here, do you? Well, lad, we were we were brought up in Mudderkay. We were man, let's have a right. Um, so yeah, I done, done a short film about this um, this ice cream man. He was like on a on a pedal bike and he he kept on hearing this this the same tune over and over again. And I basically me and my sister played like. Uh, just two kids buying ice cream off him and then I uh, went to like a drama group when I was about five and then fucked it off and then got back into it when I was about nine done it for about two years done a little play in the Unity Theatre um, what was called it was called what, what was it like in the war man nan. and then I done it um, I, I had about three lines in Grange Hill then and then in the dinner queue and then that was it that was enough for me and I thought oh, I fucking made it now and then fucked it off how old are you then? 29, I am, Bill. So, Grange Hill, fucking hell, that, that must oh, have been, you know, that must have been on the arse end of it, finishing. Yeah, it was about 2004, it was. Yeah. But it was literally like, fucking hell, I think I had three lines. <laughs> I think someone was getting, getting a bit of stick in the dinner <laughs> sort of, and I was playing someone's mate who was getting fucking bollocks. <laughs> but I think that was it then, I mean, oh, that's it now, I'm fucking, yeah, yeah I've made it. The big time. Big time, yeah, and then fucked it off and just started smoking weed. And fuck, yeah, just being a lazy little bastard. So what, so, what's, um, what was it like... You know, did you have any plans of of being an actor, or did did you, did you know? Because from Kirby, Kirby's your off place. You know, was you just going to follow in the, the footsteps of your dad? Was it peer uh, pressure? Was your dad like encouraging you? Was it something nah. that you'd seen him doing? Thought, you know, I want to be the same as him. I think it was, yeah. No, nah, I think it was because I mean, as you say, you had to come from Kirby, and you know, to get into you know fucking drama or acting, it's not something that you really, do you know what I mean? It's yeah. not something that you aspire to be. But I think if my half wasn't an actor. I don't know if I would be an actor myself, do you know what I mean? But um but yeah, and like even as a young age, like going to work with him and you know, going to watch plays and that and you know, seeing uh yeah, just just seeing all these different types of plays in the everyman and the playhouse and I don't know, it just I used to get a buzz off watching it. And yeah, so I, I sort of feel like that was you know yeah, just that's sort of like an inspiration in a way, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then um and then, yeah, but even as a kid, I just used to make, like, fucking 
loads of mad little short films on like camcorders like that yeah. you know what I mean like be watching because I, I was always like fucking obsessed with history and I love history so I always like used to watch Band of Brothers like over and over and over again and I you know, remember trying to like recreate that on my mom's back garden and fucking you know <laughs> trying to watch it back thinking it looked the same as Band of Brothers and what the fuck it looks fucking shy to me half of the same you know we haven't got the budget lad so it's yeah. like <laughs> do you know what I mean <laughs> but, um, but yeah just making like I, I remember we got a computer off the uh off Ruffy's school when we my older sister did because we never had the internet because my mom and dad were skins so we got like a fucking a, you know a free computer and that and I used to make films on on the, on the webcam it was just a little shitty webcam we, me and my ma I think I fucking must have killed my ma about fucking 300 times in gangster films I used to make <laughs> yeah. so yeah that was it lad. Just I think it, I've always wanted to do it you know what I mean but it was just you've had that creative kind of Way about you having just by the signs of it, you just been, yeah, you know, thinking outside the box. Yeah, yeah, man, just yeah, always wanting to sort of like, yeah, just always being fascinated. And I remember going on, on set with me half fella when I was a bar. I think it was it must have been a bar. Fucking hell, it was a film called Liam. I don't know if you'd ever seen it. What's it called, Liam? Liam, yeah, Jimmy McGovern film, and it's about this little lad who's. Fuck, I can't even... He's got, like, a bad stutter. That's all I can remember about it. Anyway, I remember going on the set with me half fella for that in about 1999. I think it was about 1999. Got a fucking mad way about knowing what years it was, and I don't know, but my head's a bit fucking nuts. So I just... I think it was about 99, because the film came out in 2000. I remember going on set and just being, like... Yeah, just fucking loving it, man. Just, you know, seeing... I'm watching all the other young lads, but I never had a, an opportunity. I, I never... I was never auditioned, and I remember the, the kid who played the lead in it. I can't remember his name. He was a lovely lad. But I remember just like, you know, watching him do it and thinking, oh, you know, fucking wow. really, really wanting to do it. So I think even as a young age, I've always wanted to do it, but yeah. it was just, I don't know, you just go through your teenage years and, you know, if, until you fucking, until you find yourself or whatever, whatever the fuck that means. It's good that you've, you know, you're on here and you can share, you know, about your journey because there's a lot of young kids out there, like myself, growing yeah. up, who thought it'd never be possible, anything like that. You know, I was always in school and I'd see, um, like one of the girls, she was in um, she was in Brookside in the end. Damien and um, she what? was Damien's girlfriend, didn't it? What was her name? Oh, Jillian, I think her name was. Oh, I'm on to a Jillian. He's a Kenny. He's a Kenny. Jillian. Yeah, Kenny. yeah, yeah. She was I don't in. Know our, her, but I know who she is. Like she yeah, was she in was. our school, Jillian. She was a yeah. she was a year above me, and I remember drama every week that we used to go to school. She would be in there. She'd be the top. Yeah. And me and everyone would be watching her brand of applause. I'd be like fucking. I'd be standing there just holding a fucking. Brush or something, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> never getting a never getting a line or nothing. So yeah. I always felt envious, and I, I never thought it was possible. And I, like you said, you know, I went on a like the first movie set I went on was Rambo, Rambo, off, yeah. yeah. So it was Rambo Four, right? What one was that? Was that where he's in the like? Uh, I'm sure I went to pictures to see that. It was, was in, it? it was in there. It was in. It was in Thailand. Yeah, yeah, Thailand one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's running through the paddy fields. And yeah, that, yeah. And so that was, the, that was the first ever experience I've ever had of yeah. like uh, being on a film set and, uh, and I played Stallone stunt stands in on Rambo yeah. 4 so that was a fucking hell how, the fuck, how did you get that from oh, mate, I was just like I was probably in the right place at the wrong time <laughs> 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 and I, uh, it, went that, it, went, it went down the wrong path but we'll talk about that another time so, so for you right all the excitement of being on set initially yeah, yeah. Yeah, what do you mean? Just fucking, just being on set. What's it like? No, you know your first, your first experience when you seen that Liam and you thought, is this what you want? A little yeah, bit of this, yeah. isn't that? Yeah. So how did you, how did you go down that road to get to, to where you are today? Because you've been in loads of movies now, haven't you? Loads of little bits, isn't that? Yeah, I've done a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah. plotted on, man. Yeah. Hey, I mean, it's, it's, I've been doing it ten years this year. This is yeah. like the, like 2012. I left college and then, yeah. So. um Fucking hell, after the uh, rewind the fucking shape here, and we had to see what I can remember. Uh, just, um, yeah, I, as I said, like I was doing gardening, and uh, yeah, just fucking sort of comes to the conclusion that I was never going to play for Liverpool. Yeah. Um, and then, I mean, I was never a fucking good footy player anyway, so I don't know why the fuck I think I was going to play for Liverpool. But you know what I mean? You still have that fucking, you know what I mean, in your head, you still think you're going to be a fucking footy player. I think every boy thinks at one point they are, don't they? Yeah. And then yeah, I was just um, just fucking got up one morning, and I was watching a uh, what was I watching? Oh no, that was an our kid. Me, my sister Laura was thinking about going to Lippa. She fucking killed me for saying this on here, but she was thinking about going to Lippa, and I was remember like she was like she got given like a, a big sort of um, speech from Macbeth, 
and I was sort of like, you know, looking, you know, sort of trying to do the accent and trying to, you know, like, you know, they thus to make mockery of the king and do all that. And I was like, I can't fucking do that. Do you know what I mean? I could, so yeah, so that was it. And then it sort of started playing on my head then. And then my girlfriend at the time was like, oh, why don't you try and get into drama? I think you'd be good at it. So yeah, just sort of um, went from there. And then I remember getting up one morning and uh, there was, used to watch Boardwalk Empire onto that because Steve's in yeah. it. I was watching that and fucking my sister. I remember watching that and just like just thinking, fucking hell, I could do what they're doing. And just sort of like doing an impression of like the fella who was playing Luckily Luciano. And then, yeah, I just fucking put like, my sister had like a mad bowl of that on, so I just put the bowl of that on and I was just sort of doing the accent in the middle on my own. Like a fucking weirdo. <laughs> and, um, and then, yeah, just, yeah, sort of went from there. I was knocking pins in and I was like, yeah, dad, you know, I want to get back into acting. So, yeah, just joined a little amateur dramatics group called Network. Done um done twelve nights, fucking loved it. Um and then yeah. But I remember the first time going there, because I was like, I don't know, yeah, we had to do like this improvisation, like there was a fucking plane going down. And I was thinking, alright, how could I be really good here? So I, I like I, I sort of like try to like do like a, a neutral like uh, American accent and just try to like yo, like fucking hell I was thinking, oh I must if I, if I'm a good actor and I can do the American accent for some you know the way you fucking yeah, work. Mm-hmm. So I was sort of like just, yeah, doing like this fucking mad American accent on my first, like, uh, first go at um, fucking, yeah, at Network Theatre Company. And then joined the Everyman, done that for about a year. And then, um, and yeah, left there and then just left my job and then went to, went to college then for about a year, done that. And then fucking, yeah, uh, what, what happens after that? Done a, a play called Terriers. You're onto Terriers. You know that. I no. you might, because it's about like young people joining gangs and that, and about like you know. It's... I'll have to look it up though. Terry. Terriers. 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 Oh, yeah, it's like a TIE play. They go around like schools in in Liverpool and do it. No, I haven't seen that. Yeah, no, it's, no, it's no. not a film. It's just a little TIE play. So I've done that, and then, then yeah, then um, got a got an agent from that because the. The director of that put me forward for this this film that was getting cast, and the agent was sort of casting it, and then she said, "Do you have any representation?" And I was like, "Nah." So I signed with her, and then uh, yeah, it's on a little play called Tony Teardrop in the bombed out church, which was fucking brilliant actually. It was like by homeless people. I think it's seen that one, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it was uh, it was great. Was it a sad one? Was it a, was a Tony Teardrop? Yeah, it was fucking sad. Yeah, really yeah. sad. It was it was it was like a. So we done it outside. We done it outside. Mm. Fucking, he's always coming in. I'm fucking. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll let him speaking like here from you know. It's a fucking. Yeah. So we done it outside and um. You be on the fucking roof next. Oh, right. <laughs> Shouting over the window. Oh yeah. Right. Um. So we yeah we done it outside and it was basically about this fella who um who loses his his, his wife and that and his kids. Uh, through fucking drug problems and he ends up in like remember halfway houses what do you call that yeah, or wet I mean, houses yeah, do you remember them dry houses dry houses yeah, yeah but yeah. it was like the one was drying there everyone was still pissed yeah yeah so it was based on one of them and I played like a young lad who, who gets kicked out of his house by his stepdad and yeah someone f- and then went from there and ends on an audition for fucking a film called um, The Black Sea it was called with Jude Law and then, yeah just ended up booking that and then just sort of went on from there man yeah, that was about 2013, it was. Brilliant. Yeah. See, I remember um, Stephen Graham in 1987 when we were kids, because you lived above our Kathleen. Yeah. Right? Nickname was Dutchie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so <laughs> Dutchie, Dutchie lived with his ma, Mary. Yeah, yeah, Mary, yeah, boss Mary. So we, probably. Maple Towers. Is right? that where you was, Maple Towers? Maple Towers. Yeah. Dutchie was above us, right? And there was our kid, our, our Terry, our Stephen, and our Gary. Terry, Stephen, Gary. The other, right? And they would come. They used to um, they used to always see Stephen going out this, this little flat, getting in the lift and going on his little travels with his little man bag, like a little case thing. Yeah. And everyone was roaring off him all the time. You know, get on him, fucking yeah. sausage, right? But look at him now. Relax. Yeah, this is what it's about, right? See, I, I now you look back and you think these kids are standing on corners, smoking green, having a bevy, doing what they're doing, and you got this little straight goer doing his own little thing, getting yeah. on with his life. Yeah, like yeah, getting yeah. rolled off. Next episode, he's a multi-millionaire. Yeah. He's, he's in all the, you know, he's, he's sought after all over the world uh, in films, dramas, the lot. Yeah. It's a no-brainer, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, fucking, he's, bre- he's great stage, you know what I mean? I feel like, because he's, he's like, I don't know if you, are you dyslexic as well, Will? No, no. I don't know why I thought you were dyslexic, lad. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, uh, I have a lot of other things, like. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> But um, but yeah, he's yeah he's he's grafted for what you know when he's 
he's a fucking lovely fella, I love Steve a bit, you know what I mean, he's got a big heart and that, so, yeah, I respect everything that he's done. Yeah, he came to my house, uh, I was diagnosed with cancer, uh, stage 3 cancer, I was thinking this is it, I'm on the way out, Sean got a such as I I think I had a picture of Steve when he was about 7 yeah. with our kid, Yeah. and I sent it to him on uh, Twitter, Yeah. And he, and he liked it and sent me a little message that, something nice one and all that then I got I told him what was going on and he came round to my house with his driver because he was in Liverpool doing something and dropped a few uh, items off for uh, this charity dude that we were doing in Oscars you know it was nice and he stayed in touch give yeah, me his yeah, number yeah. I, I lost it fucking because of like I went back in to the grip of addiction and shows everything yeah, <laughs> you, really, lose, yeah. you lose everything then, what was you addicted to Bill? I was addicted to fucking heroin and was you just my yeah, head yeah. Yeah. the law that, the, what like injecting or smoking and all that my head <laughs> <laughs> people still have that stereotypical shout on that one yeah uh, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Was, I was no I was, I was I was heavy right but you um, wouldn't to look at you now apart from you know but you just look like a, an ex-boxer I wouldn't say that you were on the gear whatsoever yeah, yeah. that's that's it lad that's it <laughs> Sorry, I mean, I fucking, yeah. <laughs> fucking smack it. <laughs> you having a laugh at that money joke? Sorry, bro. It's sad, mate. Don't knock me out, la. I won't. <laughs> um, Let me yeah. take my glasses off first if you're going to throw a dig. So, yeah, no. It's. It, yes, you've got a big heart, like you said. Yeah. A lot of people have fucking hate on him and that for what he is, and I think that's the, around it's all. Jealousy, it's jealous, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, jealous. Yeah, jealous. He is. Huh? He's a lovely, lovely kid, and his, and his Mrs. Hannah. Yeah, he's you know, lovely, yeah, she's, lovely people. She, she's looked after him really well. Yeah. So, big shout out, Steve. Um, I've just, just done something recently with a, um, with a guy, a baby brother. And a oh, it was little Paddy Rowan in that? Yeah. yeah he's, um, I, haven't, I, I, I haven't seen it, but I've seen it like, you know, fucking. That was Paddy's uh, uh, stepdad. Was he, yeah? Yeah, I'm not going to tell you what I've done to him, right, but it was heavy. Hopefully, um, and I got a little that, that Rambo experience coming into yeah, play. Oh, then, man. <laughs> nearly, saw, nearly saw his windpipe out. The long standing to fucking Big so Billy. Do you, do you know where, uh, like, Lewis Devine? No, I don't know. He's from Kirby, Devine Theatre Company. No, I don't know. Him. DTC. No, you'll have to have a little look. My ears, that's Lewis awesome. Devine. Yeah, Lewis Devine. He's oh. into all the theatre. Is he? Um, I think he's. He's married or he's in a relationship with uh, Lucy out of Emmerdale, the girl. I can't remember a second Fucking name. I don't even watch the telly. Oh, I don't sure, yeah. But um, yeah, my daughter's, my stepdaughter's involved and she's, you know, she loves watching this. Oh, yeah. She's involved in acting and she's going, she wants to go to Lipper and stuff like that. Oh, boss. So if there's any sort of guidance or any suggestions you can offer on this like podcast to, to, to young, up and coming, you know, talented actresses or actors, yeah, share it, lad, because... I think she struggles with her confidence in some areas. Oh, mate, but that's fucking... She's great in the do. house. Yeah. But right. then when it, when it comes to the crunch, but we all suffer with that, though, do you know what I mean? I think anyone who fucking doesn't suffer with that is a fucking psychopath. I mean, yeah. no, I shouldn't say that. Yeah. But do you know what I mean? Like yeah. an egomaniac, I yeah. feel like if people... I think, to, you know, to make to make you good as a fucking actor, mm. in my opinion, if you've, you've got to be vulnerable, man. You've yeah. got to have that sense of... I've been through shit in my head and I don't I feel a bit insecure because it gets you to that place where you've got to be in your fucking head. Do you know yeah. what I mean? I think. So I mean I think anyone who's I think she's just right and and I and I, I try and encourage her and, and give her a little bit of you know, a little bit of my kind of like confidence and say, look, just just stand yeah. and be be who you are because yeah. no one's gonna do it for you. Yeah, yeah. You know, you've got to be yourself, you've got to make this happen. Mm. You know, you've got to show them, and, and it's your time to shine because you're just going to be sh- lurking in the shadows of these people who are doing all that. Yeah. Right? Because that's what's happening at the minute. Everyone else is getting lines, everyone else is uh, in the forelight, and, and she's like that at the back. And I think, come on, girl. And she's, but does she know that she's better, she can do more than that? I know. In she herself? Can. Yeah, I know. But she does can. She, is she like that herself? Do you know what I mean? Is she like. Did she, has she said that to you? I know I can do more than that, but I'm still doing. Do you know, do you no, know what I mean? No, nah, she hasn't said but that. We need to speak. We need to talk more on that going forward. I think. Yeah. You know what I mean? Ah oh, well, I mean, it's, 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 I think it's it's soft. I win it. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like being being a kid and getting into yeah. that because I've got my two child actors and I, I think I don't know. I, I think I'm fucking glad that I never really was one. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. To a degree. Yeah. But I mean any advice for someone who's you know feeling like that I think you've just got to let it come naturally instead of being like you know trying to force it yeah don't yeah. be like, to get, you, do you know what I'm saying like get to the fucking front it's like just if if, if it is for you and you want to do it I think it'll happen do you know what I mean 
But I think it's important also just to be a fucking kid. How old is she? I think oh, she's 15 now. Oh, is she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. so she's, well, she's been going for about seven years. Yeah. You know, so, you know, hopefully, you know, going to Lippe will kind of open up a few doors. Yeah, uh, yeah, Help her, a bit of confidence. Has she got in, has she? she got into Lippe? No, she's, oh. um, well, she's got to go through the whole process of going through the, all the, the red, I don't know what the fuck you go through that to be fair but she's got to go through all that all stuff. the auditions and all yeah. that yeah no idea what it is anyway so tell us a little bit about what it's like being Bobby Schofield in real life like the ups and downs of like the, your mental well-being and yeah. you know how you cope with day to day stuff because it it must be difficult like going from one character to another or being out of work yeah stuff so just let's get real with all that I mean, fucking hell. So where to start, lad? Like. <laughs> uh, start at the beginning, Bobby. Uh, I don't know. It's just sort of like, I think when, f- for me anyway, personally, I think anyone who wants to be an actor, it's sort of, you know, honestly, if you fucking really give a fuck about it, I, I, not everyone, but I feel also, you know, if you get enjoyment or you get a kick out of pretending to be someone else, I feel like there's, there's something there a bit missing in you. Do you know what I mean? Maybe, obviously, maybe it's not for everyone, like, in that sense. Because some people just want to be fucking, you know, film stars or fucking famous, do you know what I mean? Or that's what, you know, they love the lifestyle of it. I'm never really asked about that. I don't yeah. give a fuck about that. It's more about the story with me, you know what I mean? And then on top of that, if I can pretend to be someone else apart from me fucking self for a yeah. bit, that's a fucking bonus. But, I mean, day to day, like, yeah... You know, when I'm not fucking working, I, you know, I'll be in the, I'll try and get in the gym as much as possible. And, you know, I, I've struggled with fucking alcoholism, but, you know, is that, is that the right word? Yeah, that yeah, was a big yeah, word for yeah. me, that way. Alcoholism, yeah. yeah. Alcoholism. Yeah. Have you ever struggled with the drink? Alcoholism, <laughs> there you go. That's, that's quite, it's talk like that. But yeah, nah, so I've, you know, I've struggled with fucking, with that before. And, you know, I feel like you can be, you know, at the top where you've, you know, got loads of fucking money and you've got all this time on your hands. You know what I mean? Say, you know, you're in between jobs or... Yeah, I'll just put it into perspective. Like, this year, you know, I was non-stop for three years and then I finished filming in March and I had the job lined up after that. But I just went, you know what, I need some fucking time to try and figure out who the fuck I am. (laughs) Do you know what I mean? Because, yeah, it is, like, going from different characters to characters. Because, especially me, like, I get fucking... I get obsessed with doing portraying, like, to the point of, like... You know, I, was, I suffer, sorry, I keep on going back and forth and back and forth. I suffer bad with, like, OCD, so for me, when I'm, you know, planning who I'm portraying, I go fucking in, man. Like, I go, you know, I, 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 I can't stop thinking about it or me in particular, I'll repeat my lines over and over and over and over and over, and over to the point of fucking, like, this is fucking weird, do you know what I mean? And even, I've done that for years until I got help two years ago. And I needed to get help yeah. because it was getting to the point where I was like, you know, fucking punching walls and fucking punching myself. Like, if I'm honest with you, it was really dark. And even then, like, you're thinking to yourself, why the fuck am I doing this? Do you know what I mean? Why, 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 why am I, why am I putting myself through this pain or this suffering for your, your work? Do you know what I mean? But it was like I knew it wasn't right, so I needed to get help on that. And I said, you know, so yeah, so do, you know, doing all that and. Sorry, I'm fucking going off track here. No, no, the bevy was the bevy was kicking in. Yeah, yeah, so the, you know the ale was kicking in, and it, I, it got to a point last year where I was just before I was doing a job, um, and if, you know I was I was proud to be a part of it because I don't know if you've seen it was called the Walk In. Did you see that? I mean, was that Stephen Graham's new yeah, one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she was in it. Yeah, it was yeah. about two story about uh, neo Nazis basically. I have to watch that, and I feel like that took a toll on me a little bit because. Yeah. You know, I was so like, you know, just researching so much about it. And I know a lot about, you know, sort of right wing politics. I just know about politics in general, you know what I mean? Mm. It's always something for, interested in me. And I've always been fascinated by the way people like that think. Because, you know, yeah. like, how can you have so much hatred in your fucking heart? But then you look deep down on that and you, there's always something fucking not right with them. Or not not right, but there's always something missing with them, do you know what I mean? So I feel like getting into the person I was portraying. It was a bit, so I found myself on the source, but it was me previous to that. I was fucking, you know, we were doing a job in Morocco and that was like height of the pandemic. And, you know, we were, it was great, like, but we were on the fucking source near enough every day. You know what I mean? And then I go, like Morocco. Oh, it's fucking great, <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. But we were in air food, so it was like the desert. But yeah, yeah, so I found myself on the source. So that was the first. So after that, I start, I had a week 
off turn around and then I started another job and the other job was very much um, it was a really interesting character to play uh, I think called the suspect so I sort of I think that was my first sort of attempt of, to go alright I, I need to really go and get a bit of help with this because I'm fucking I'm, I'm twatting the ale like every other day not so much getting up every fucking day but every other day I'm getting bladdered yeah. to the point of like I'm Week, weekdays yeah, weekdays, yeah. like, you know, it's not every day I'm getting up and going, but it's every other day. It turns into every day, though, doesn't it? Well, yeah. The, the progression. The progression of it, yeah. yeah. So, you know, I, so I started, I went to um, AA for the first time, and my sister's like four years sober. So I went to AA for the first time. and How well done to your sister? I know, yeah. yeah she's man. done amazing, man. She's done amazing. Fucking amazing. I'm five Dead. years in recovery, Michelle. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I've been going to a fellowship for, well, I've been going for like, 15, 16 years. So I'm five years abstinent, so... You oh, know, if you don't mind me asking, how many times have you relapsed? I always find it fascinating. Sh- for me, all right, I'll share this, right? My relapses haven't been, like, uh, little ones, like, re- quite regular. See, for initially, I got clean, I got, well, I got a couple of years in, three three years, and then I'd relapsed for six months, and then I got clean again for a couple of years. So yeah. I end, I've had, like... Three years, four years, five years, yeah. five years. Yeah. And I've had a few relapses on the way. And, and the relapses for me have always um, been in the post. It's always been about me, me behaviour. Yeah. The way uh, I see the world, the way I react instead of responding. Is there only be, is there always been something like that's been a fucking trigger? For yeah. You to do that? Like, I, and like, you know, like see, a, look, I haven't got the desire to use. I haven't got the obsession, right? But it's always been like a relationship. Mm. Potentially, right? It, that's kind of that I couldn't cope with. I couldn't cope with the feelings. I couldn't cope with rejection. You know, I've been uh, consumed with uh, anxiety and, right. and and paranoia around a certain fucking bed of being weird and you know, and it sabotage you. Yeah. You know, and for me, when it would end, the pain would fucking crucify me. And, and the answer to that was to take drugs. Was, yeah. and someone said to me. You know, if drugs was your answer, what was your question? And I thought, well, yeah, okay. That's the answer that'll take away all the feelings. And it did. It was like a relief briefly, but then it was a consequence. And then I was back in the grip and I'm rolling with it. And I'm off and running. And I'm wrecking my life and I'm wrecking everyone else's life around me. And it gets to a point where, you know, I'm at rock bottom. And I think I'm at the bottom of like this this place and all of a sudden it becomes a trap door. Yeah. There's another rock bottom. Boom, and another, another. Right. If I get as bad as him, then I'll stop. Boom, I hit his level. If I get as bad as him, I'll, I'll, I'll stop. Yeah. So yeah, for me, you know, I think the relapses have always been due to like either relationships. The last relapse I had was cancer. Right, it yeah. was five years almost clean. Got diagnosed with cancer. Got medication. Thought it was going to die. I had a big payoff from this movie. A prayer before dawn. Boom, there's twenty five k in your bank. You've got cancer, right? Okay, so I'm on medication. I, at that time, did you did you, was was it in between? Did you have all the all clear, or was it like you, you were still in the fucking? No, no, I don't know if no, you were gonna I die. Was still, or not. No, I was still. I, had, I was on chemo. Fucking hell! So, so, then, so you've obviously just went with fucking. Yeah, it so off me almost fucking five years under my belt. I was job car. I've showed this loads of times. People know my story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So, I, and I'll, I'll get someone saying, well, we'll let Bobby fucking speak, Bill. <laughs> right. Bobby's asked me a question. Like, I, I, it's just a conversation. I'm not going to, you know, fucking. So, yeah. yeah, no, for me, it was a um, big payout. See you later. Spent yeah. it all on the. I had, I was working with the uh, other Kane <laughs> films at the time. I had a little bit of a follow up with that little film, to be fair. Yeah. Don't know if you've ever come across them. Oh, it, I, I've heard of them, yeah. yeah. What's his name? Sol, is it? Sol. Sol Shad. I mean, I'm not going to make a judgment on anyone else. Yeah. I've got a feeling. I've got my own opinion. But I'll leave it at that. Yeah. yeah because, you know, you're going to have someone else. I'll have to watch that film, though, because I still haven't watched it. And all my mates fucking rave about it as well. Joe's. Joe Cole is absolutely incredible. Now he's cracking after that lad. He is fucking good actor. And to say, to, 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 <laughs> I say that he's got. I've only seen him in Peaky. That was. I think that's. He was. Um, he's in Gangs of London. But I tell you what he said to me. He got on the phone. He went, "Oh, I bell you know what, mate." I said, "Yeah." He said, "Yeah," because we were going to the Philippines to do this. You know, because I'd been banned from Thailand, so they'd done yeah. thirty days shooting in the in the Thailand, and they had like ten days left. And I was in the last scene, so you know we were doing the last ten in the Philippines, and I flew to the Philippines, and he went, "Bill." You know, you might find that a little bit confusing when you see me because I'm going to be speaking like a scouser all the time, right? Yeah. So I said, all right, lad. 
So it turns up and he's like, what's happening? And even when we were out, yeah. going for something to eat, and it was like, it was like, it sounded like John Lennon, right? Oh, really, yeah? Like, like, sort of through the nose type of thing. It was hard. It was, guy, it, we always struggled with the fact that a non-scouser was playing a scouser. Was playing a scouser because you're going to, it's it, if you're a scouser, you can get on a straight away. Yeah. But it was more of a, um, the film was more driven by the fact that it was, you know, n- as, as no, the, the communication in it wasn't as yeah. much. Yeah, the narrative yeah, yeah. was quite limited. Yeah. You know, the dialogue was short. Yeah. Due to the fact that most of the the, the, the ties, when they were speaking, there was no subtitles. It was, it was, what do you mean? So if I'm speaking to you in, in Thai... Oh, so they were actually speaking Thai yeah. in it, but there was no and fucking... So you're oh, speaking okay. to me in Thai. Yeah, but you right. couldn't understand, but it was, there was no subtitles on it yeah. for people to understand. So when, when people are watching it, it, it immerses them. Yeah. Because you're confused. Yeah, yeah, as a, yeah. As, as a member of the audience going, what the fuck are they saying to him? Yeah. And you see the actor who's playing Michelle Joe. Yeah. Like, that. what the fuck are they saying to me? So you're in there with it. So that was quite clever of the director. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah anyway, moving on. Yeah. He's um he's he's doing well for himself. I like Joe. He's still a good friend. Cracking actor. Yeah, he'll be back in Liverpool soon, and you know I might introduce you to him and see yeah, him get on him. So go on. So where's your head being then with it? So you've got all this. We've gone raro track. I'm sorry, <laughs> fucking Bobby. <laughs> calling me a schmackhead. I never called you. Uh, did I call you a schmackhead then? Call me a fucking schmackhead. No, I never. I said always. Did I say always you a schmackhead? Did that was him? You calling me a schmackhead? Sorry, Bill. Let me take my glasses off if you want to start throwing things. <laughs> I'm only joking, mate. <laughs> I just love when other people love. Right. Um, no, so, you struggled with uh, your, mental, your mental health over this, well, yeah? I can't imagine that, mate. You know, yeah. where your head goes. Because it must be a lonely place being an actor. Like, it must be. Because I, I speak to Joe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, on a regular basis. And, um, you know, and I, and I fucking love the kid. Yeah. You know, I do. But I was like... I was a struggle, and I was someone, you know, you'd struggle with me in the early days. Yeah. So when he got to know me, he was like, fucking hell, this kid's hard work. Yeah. Because I was around a bend. You know, I'm going back like eight years, nine years, but yeah. fucking nuts as well. So he must have had an hard time trying to like, do a, a character study on me. On you, yeah, because yeah. you're so fucking And when he talks, it, when he talks about me you know, on interviews, you, you, I hear him go, he was very complex, Billy, you know, he was very, um, <laughs> there's a lot to him, you know, he was very emotional and driven by this, how you fucking describe it, yeah. see? Fuck it, yeah, it's pretty clever. So, yeah, so you, you, tell us a little bit about how you've overcome, or if you have overcome. What, just fucking, like, is, yeah, being shocked. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I've just sort, I've sort of, uh, I've stopped drinking again, I've, yeah, because I, I think that was, you know, you, to, you obviously know yourself, you get to a certain point where you're like, so I went, I went sober for like, for the job I was doing last year and I'd done that for about, <laughs> fucking hell, about a month and a half and then just, but even then I remember having the first pint, I was like, I got all of my main shit out of the way and then I was like, oh I can reward myself now with a fucking, a pint, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then you just, and then you think, to, and then I thought to myself, well I can control this now, but then, you know, fucking eight months down the line, you're just back to square one again where you're like, fucking, I'm in the boozer here at fucking half twelve after going to the gym. Yeah. I'm, you know, fucking buying the paper as an excuse to sit in the boozer and read, like, fucking hell, I'm 29, I'm not fucking 68. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, I've, I've sort of, yeah, so I've, 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 yeah, I've sort of knocked that on the head, touch wood up to now, so I'm, 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 out, gr- I'm out, grateful for that. Here's a question for you. How um, did it make you feel, Bobby, seriously? You know, when you, you were bevying and you find yourself sitting in boozers and you, and you know you you justifying the reasons by buying papers and sitting there reading it, thinking, yeah. you know, I'm here because I'm reading the fucking paper. But the reality is, you're here because you want a bevy. You yeah, know? yeah. And you're trying to escape because it's all about. For me, it was all about escape. I wanted to escape the reality of my own mind. Yeah. Right. They had loads of intrusive thoughts coming through the back door. I was I was fucked up in in in, in me thinking, you know, and I. I put myself down, I was my own worst critic, there was a lot going on in my head, yeah. right, and I thought, if you could see what was going on, if my head was made of glass and you could see my thoughts, you'd fucking lock me up, Yeah, you know, yeah, that yeah, kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, fucking right, um, yeah. I think a lot, like, not only ourselves, but there's many people out there, suffer, oh, suffer, with, yeah. suffer with, like, shelf, yeah, it's because that's what it is, shelf, you know, your sister, will probably, what do you mean shelf, what's that mean? Your shelf. Oh, self, did you sell yeah, self? I, I thought it was a, I say, I thought right, it was an AA term, <laughs> shelf. I'm like, I haven't heard this one. What's shelf mean then? <laughs> right, right, there's, a, there's something I say, right? I, I sound like fucking Sean Connery, mate, right? 
Well, let's say, uh, <laughs> somehow, 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 one went uh, to his son and he sent me a little message. It was funny. He said, Bill, me man keeps saying, why does he say, you're shitting in your car? <laughs> <laughs> It's just your accent. I say, yeah. Well, I'm sitting in my car. Like, but when I say I'm shitting in my car, like, so yeah, I fucking I sound like I'm shitting in my car. And I'm on the shelf. Wipe your ass on the fucking gears, yeah. there. Yeah. So yeah, no. So no, it's all about shelf, isn't it? Yeah. You know. Yeah. No, it is. Yeah. I think it's for me. Like, I mean, I, it was. Um, I don't know. It was just. I, I think boredom plays a big part of it. And, uh, yeah, I don't know, just, just, also, another thing as well was, like, I don't know, getting good feedback off, off sort of stuff that's come out recently, um, and I was, you know, finding myself, like, I don't know, being really happy, do you know what I mean? Like, and my way of happiness was always rewarding myself through having a bevy, you know what I mean? Fucking, yeah, yeah. great this, I'll have a pint, or I'll fucking, you know, make myself a gin and tonic. And it's still a fucking battle now. I'm still battling with it now, but I'm doing all right. Of you know, I've don't want to say how long I've been, but I'm I'm proud of myself for for, for what I'm doing. And I'm speaking to a lot of a lot of my mates who are sober, so I found myself like you know rewarding. Get, you know, just got and it was it wasn't to the point where it was affecting me work. It wasn't that, and you know, I'd, I'd always still do my tapes and that. And but as I say, I've had I've had like a certain amount of time off where I could afford to and I needed to. You know what I mean? So all that time was like, right, well, I've worked my ass off there, so now I can just go, we hey, I'm fucking, you know, but then it gets to a point where you're like, as you say, you, you fucking buying the paper and going to the pub at half 12 to reward yourself on a fucking mm. Wednesday and you're like, oh, you know what I mean? And I think I found myself not, you know, not long ago going to Burger, um, and fucking, you know, I phone my mate in the morning being like, oh, you know, what do you do? Do you fancy going for a pint and that? And he was like, oh, yeah, you know, sort of trying to persuade him anyway. He couldn't make it for certain reasons. But I ended up going into town anyway and fucking having myself something to eat on my own, buying the paper and then, you know, getting a pint, having a few more pints. You know, I wasn't even fucking reading the paper. I was still mm. pissed from the night before, to be honest. And then goes to the pub, spews everything up in the toilet and then goes back to the bar and gets a pint. But even then I'm like, what the fuck am I doing, man? Do you know what I mean? But anyway, yeah. So that 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 was that, that, uh, I can't even remember what we're talking about. What being an actor or something or yeah, the no, fucking no, you are on the right track. You're yeah, like, yeah. So uh, you know the the highs and the lows. I feel like that was something that um that yeah you know fucking. See, you know this is a good topic because it takes you to it. It doesn't matter who you are, where you are, what you're going. Yeah. You know what's going on in life. You know you, it all takes you to the same place. You're like you know to sitting in you know having a berry and you know. It could be like the sh- similar to a drug drug addict. Yeah, you know, it's a fucking you know, you know, rewarding know. himself with a with a, with a fucking a line of Charlie. We're well, buying a feeling, aren't you? Yeah. You're buying so. Oh, I yeah. heard someone say you're fucking you're lending tomorrow's happiness. I thought that was a great fucking thing yeah. because you know it's it's it's, it's true though, isn't it? You yeah. just like because if you've got to buy your feelings, you've got to buy you're buying a fucking feeling because yeah. you're feeling like shite. And I, I, I funny enough, I, I played at a. Heroin addict. Um, mm. a couple of years ago. Sorry, I wouldn't say. I wouldn't say the S <laughs> word. <laughs> I played it. I played it. Uh, and I don't know. A couple of years ago, and I lost about a fucking three and a half stone for it. And I met up with a load of ex heroin addicts. A fella called Jerry Linford who we done a play for. He, I messaged him because I know he, he suffered with addiction, but his was the source and gambling. Um, but I said, listen, because I know we done a lot of the brink. You're onto the brink, aren't you? Mm, yeah, yeah. So I know we done a lot of work with like ex. Uh, addicts and I was like you know if it's okay is it all right if I come and meet some I don't want to meet some who we're using because I feel like they're at the fucking they're at the pits anyway and you don't yeah. want to be like what's it like being on, on gear do you know what I mean it's like because yeah. they're already damaged people anyway and you're like so I meet up with this fella and you know he was like sort of like fucking you know proper Manchester and he was like right you know I worked in you know fucking um, I, I was like I'd done this for years and I was too busy you know he was fuck, a charismatic fella I can't remember his name but I remember meeting him and he was like explaining to me about it because I was like, you know, it was. A, have you ever seen Inside Number Nine? No. Nah, it was an episode of that. A fucking good episode as well, man. I'm proud of it. But it was the first time I sort of reached out to someone about, um, you know, like research of like, so what's it like to be like that? 
And this fellow was just explaining to me, he was like, you know, it's a fucking full-time job, mate. You mm. get up in the morning, you know, fucking, it's a full-time job. You've got no time for anything. You know, you've got to fucking get up, right? I'm too busy doing that because you've got to go and get your fucking gear. And I was, I just remember thinking, fucking hell. It must be like, it's so... F- it is your whole mind. Your whole mind and thinking is centered in one form and drugs in one form or other because it's, it's, it's like um, you go to bed thinking about what you got for tomorrow. Yeah. You know, you wake up thinking, what have you, what have you got for tonight? It it it's it is a light. It's you start on a Monday, yeah, and you're thinking about a fucking Friday. Fucking you're hell. thinking, well, okay, so I've got this on Tuesday, I've got that on Wednesday, you know, I can get that on Thursday. I have to go fucking craft on Friday, you know all that. So you, get, yeah. you're never in the moment. Yeah, you're never in. You're never in the moments, and, and you're always fucking regretting the past. And it's it's a fucking it's a, it is a full time job. Yeah, you know, what's for me it was like, and you always wanted to stop as well. I'd always had enough, always had enough. It's gonna, I'm going to stop this time, I'm going to stop. You know, you tried every which way, but loose. You know, you, you, don't sh- you shelf-willed it, you went into detoxes, you went yeah. to prison. You know, you had family fucking kidnapping, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, you had girlfriends trying to help you, and the only person that can help you is yourself. And that's the truth. And it's like when you reach that total surrender, yeah. it's got to be a surrender, you got to put your... And someone said to me once, Bill, you know, you need to surrender to win, you know, and when you surrender, the war will end. And I used to think, fucking hell, you know, that's that's just how it is. You put up the flag, you go, okay. It's your pride, though, isn't it? Yeah. Because you fucking, you're like, well, I can control this because this is my life, but you've got, as it's, you know, you've got to fucking say, listen, I can't. Mm-hmm. You know, I can, I can see that. Do you know what I mean? I mean, I've never been where I've been addicted to drugs. Not really. I've, I, you know, I've, I'd say alcohol was worse. Well, I mean, you know? yeah, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, there's a fucking drug in it. Because it's legal, you know, you can go and purchase it anywhere you want. Yeah. It's not as if you can just go to the shop and go, right, I'll have 10 bags of heroin. And, <laughs> yeah. You probably can, really. Yeah. yeah. You know, there's a few shops that will probably sell it behind the counter. Um, but yeah, no, when it, when it is, it is, yeah, you know, the same. It, it, but alcohol is a fucking drug, isn't it? Whether it's wet I mean? or dry, it still gets your eye. That's yeah. The, that's, the, yeah. That's, the, that's what I've heard. But, you know, it's fucking... But, yeah, I think we're where we are. So, I think it just got to that point where, you know, we need to just fucking take a step back. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And yeah. So, what are you doing to, to, to stop that, to put a stamp on it? To put a full stop on that... Um, on the source? Yeah. Uh, because it's not going to fucking get you anywhere, but, like, in a dark place. Yeah. I'm just sort of... I haven't sort of started the meetings up again. Uh, just purely because I'm going down a different route, yeah. you know? Not for everyone. No, and I don't want to bang on about it too much because you might see me in the fucking ale. Yeah, <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to be one of them that goes, yeah. you know, goes on somewhere and waffles on about it, and then I'm like that way. You know what I mean? So yeah, um, yeah. So that yeah, that, that that was fucking yeah. So I mean, my girlfriend's helping me out a lot as well. She's amazing because she doesn't really drink. So, uh, but yeah, you know, even after a few weeks, I feel I feel the benefits of. Um, Oh yeah, but I think that's why I wanted to come on here, man. Do you know what mm. I mean? To have a conversation about it because I feel like it's good to speak to someone who's been through something similar. Yeah. You know, um, there's a way out. There is Bobby, and it's for me. It's always been, um, it's always been like playing it safe forward. I know that's a mad cliche, like, but like, and someone said, look, play the safe forward and see where you know that takes you. You know, yeah. look at the outcome. Yeah. You know, and I, I, I think, okay, so if I did this, you know, I might get away with it. Yeah. But I might get away with it. It's just a bevy, you know. I haven't. I never had a problem with the alcohol. So look, because I start telling myself and manipulating myself, never had a problem with the drink. You know, it was the class A for me. But then it's a gateway drug. You know, it was yeah. doors. Yeah, right? yeah. And I, and I go down that, that that path where, you know, all my inhibitions are low. I'm having an argument with some beds, or I'm having a fucking fight in a booze with someone. Next episode, I'm thinking, oh fuck it, and that's what kicks in. Right, let's go and go. Let's get a bit of let's get a bit of Charlie. Let's get a bit of swag. Boom, you know. As soon as that enters my bloodstream, I'm in the grip, and I'm well. I'm already in the grip because of the drink. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's when I can go right. Play that safe forward. It doesn't always work. Yeah, you know. And you see the outcome. The outcome for me is always jails, institution, or fucking dead. Well, how 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 how, how do you? What's your fucking thing? Of, like getting up in the morning. What do you do? Like how do you keep yourself going? Do you know what I mean? I go to gym. Right, yeah, yeah, for me, yeah. right, to get up and go to the gym, that's, I've got a routine, and get up, get the gym, you know, I've got a family now, I've got a little baby, boys too, Bless. you know, uh, that was never on the cards, I, I'm in a relationship with, with a beautiful, you know, girl called Michelle, and she's lovely, and she's absolutely supporting me in, in every, you know, area of my life. Um, on to Michelle there, was <laughs> she's, uh, 
you know, and it's, I'm, I've got that family unit. So for me, yeah. I get up, I do the gym. I tell you what it is, right? You need to get busy living or you get busy dying. That's what my mate said to me once. I said, Bill, you need to get busy living or you get busy dying. When you're on your own and you're in your own company, you're in a bad neighbourhood. Yeah. You know, you're sitting with the last person you'd ever fucking use with. Yeah. You know, um, you start thinking about things that you, you could do, should do, would do, didn't do. You start regretting. You start fantasising. Next episode, you're in fucking, you're in this also fucking ultimate universe where you're not even on your, you know, you're, yeah. you're totally out there. Um, and then you think it's a fucking good idea to go and fucking have a fucking bit of this and a bit of that. Yeah. So, for me to keep it in check, I get up and do my thing. I don't even think about it. I've got no desire to go to meetings, you know, regular. Is this your first son? Is this your yeah. first child? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking hell, congratulations, man. Fucking hell, I'm just like, you know, I, I don't think I could have, have been a dad years ago, Bobby, uh, bringing up a kid while I was sort of in and out of prison and, and in and out of addiction. Of course, yeah. But uh, you must look at him every day and be like, I've got to fucking be my best for him. Do you know what I mean? You yeah. mu- that must must cross your mind, actually. Yeah, it gets to, you know, look, it gets to a point in your life where you go, enough is enough. Yeah. Right? Enough is enough. You know, right? People used to say to me, how can you enjoy your life without a drink or, or, or having drugs? Do you know what? I've had the best time of my life. I travel around the world. Yeah. Right? I wake up. I haven't got that groggy feeling. I haven't got an hangover. I haven't got that, that fucking mouth that, like I've got a fucking flip flop fucking stuck in it. You know what I mean? I I, I feel um, strong. I feel confident. I feel healthy. I'm meeting right. Life is fucking great. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So it's, it's a lot better than sitting in a fucking crack then on Breck Road. Yeah. Trying to scrape a tenner together in a tuxedo, right? Because that's what it went, took it to me. I went from I went from the Cannes Film Festival, right, right, with two thousand people. Clapping and cheering and applauding my fucking achievements, right? Yeah. On a, on a, on a Saturday night, on a Monday morning, right? I'm in fucking I'm in Liverpool on Breck Road trying to score a fucking tenner, right? Uh, trying to trying to scrape a tenner together to get a fucking bit of crack, right? Fuck in the same tuxedo that you use so, a can with. From that, what a fucking guy! It's a fucking tera. What a fucking guy! Fucking like that, and I'm just like I'm. I feel like an imposter because all I'm thinking of. I can't wait to get out of here. Fucking gonna get fucking. Yeah, I'm sitting next to directors and financiers and actors. Oh, and, fucking and, hell. and people. We had an ovation for eight, eight and a half minutes. Stands an ovation for eight and a half minutes of this movie. I'm like, that's a fucking. Seamus, the, the, the guy from America. I said, I said, hey, I said, hey, why are they all fucking doing this? He said, this is fucking France, man. These are the harshest critics you'll ever get. He said, if they don't like the movie, they'll fucking boo you whether you're here or not, man. He fucking love it, man. <laughs> where Billy? I'm like, fucking shit. <laughs> I just want to get a bit of fucking crack now, you know what I mean? Yeah. So this is where, right, it takes me, right, so it takes me from there to that. So I know, right, if I pick up, you know, if you use, you lose. Yeah, you know, I know a mate now recently, he's just there, he's had a great job, and he's on the fucking, he's on the chair, he thinks he's, um, he can control <coughs> it. Yeah. Now he gets a phone call, you've lost your job. This Fuck. was two days ago. I think, lads, you've lost some wedge there, you know, you've lost some dough. On that job, just because of that, mm. and I, I, I don't know, mate. I just think, um, you know, I've wasted so many years now, and you know, we're blessed with a few short decades. So I think it's important to kind of grab what we've got yeah. now, and enjoy it, because there's going to be a time where you're lying on your deathbed and you're thinking, taking your last breath, thinking, did I do everything I wanted to do with my life? Yeah, 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 yeah. Fucking, did right, I yeah. fucking enjoy myself. Because yeah. I want to be lying there on my deathbed. I don't sleep and go. Did I do them things that I wanted to do? Or did I just fucking shit? I see these ads like shitting in fucking doorways, right? Right? Cap in hand. Think, mate, I'm fucking grateful. Like, I'm really grateful that I'm not in that position no more. Yeah. And if I can reach out and help someone, I will. Even if it's via a podcast or speaking to yourself and yeah. sharing stories yeah. and in trying to inspire others to go, I want to change. If Billy can do it, fucking hell mate I can do it because I was the worst I was injecting I was doing everything you could ever fucking think of right it was horrendous now like you said I don't even look like I've been on the gear no you don't you don't <laughs> fucking <laughs> jacked up la. fucking hell you fucking seen me a few fucking years ago lad you wouldn't be saying that but yeah I feel like this podcast is on me now, Bob. Sorry, Bill. I know, it's, yeah. And I apologise to my audience <laughs> for being a bell end for fucking just going. Go ahead, I, won't, I, I won't ask you any more questions now. You can fucking no, fire away. We're sad. We're, we're coming to an end soon anyway. So just give us a 
Tell us a little bit about what you want to do going forward with your life. What, what do you want to achieve? List off the, me- the movies you've made and, and the dramas and the shorts and that so that people can get to know a little bit about Bobby. And you're half fella. You're yeah. half fella's a big... Big giant in your life, and he's been yeah, a big man. actor. I, I, you know, I know your dad more than I, I know you. To be fair, yeah, because yeah. he's in my era, maybe a few years older. Yeah. How old is your dad now? Nah, I feel it's about sixty-four. You know, yeah, sixty-four so years, yeah. Yeah, it's about fifteen, yeah. fifteen years on me, like. Yeah. yeah, fifteen years, yeah. Yeah, oh, mad, isn't it? Yeah, mad. Out. But yeah, no, it's just. Yeah, I don't know. I can't be asked listening all the shit I've been on. If you want to fucking, you can Google it. Do yeah, you know what I mean? But um. Yeah, no, I mean, in the f- in the future, I think it's always been a goal of mine to, like, fucking, um, just to, you know, like, sort of earn a living from from what you love doing, yeah. you know what I mean? Uh, and if anything else comes with that, then it's fucking sensible, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Like, I just love telling good stories and stories that, that mean something to people or you think that you're going to make a fucking difference in someone's life, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that's it for me, Bill. I mean, I'd love to play a lead, maybe one day, but uh, apart from that, I'm just you know I'm just like enjoy you know enjoy what? telling stories that you know are fucking good. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's you know a lead is like everyone's fucking breaking. You know. Yeah. That's where they they, make, they get that breaking. I remember I, um, Joe Cole, right, was in Peaky Blinders, and we reached out. To, we were like we had like Charlie on him. Oh yeah, fucking hell, to, yeah, yeah, To yeah. play the role of me, right? Yeah. So he was on board for a year. Yeah. Uh, Who's that, the fella from fucking... Sons of Anarchy, so... Yeah, in my uh, Green Street. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so... I'm, to be honest, like, I'm grateful he never he, he never took the role. He ended up going into Guy Ritchie's fucking um, King Arthur, so... Time I, fin- I, f- I finished working, that was my last job, that with Guy. Was it? Yeah, my last job, yeah, I was working with him on a thing called the Interpreter, it was called. Yeah. With Jake Jill and all, I played like this American gunner. Is that out there? Is it? No, it's not. I don't think that'll be out until next year. Though. No. Yeah. I so like anyway, it, go like on. It. What was you saying? So back to you, Bill. Back to me. Back <laughs> to me. So <laughs> no. So I was saying, Joe, so, Joe, so, like yourself, you yeah. just to reiterate the question you were talking about, like you know, you want a lead role. Like Joe got the opportunity to have a lead. Yeah. And the producers didn't want him. Right. It's always the way. The producers. It's always the way, and then you'll fucking kill it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and the then you. Like, the producers that you we were dealing with were like, right, Bill, right, we don't, we don't really think Joe's good for this. And I went, well, why? Right, because the director was on it. He was saying, Bill, we'll fight for this kid because have a little look yeah. at this Joe reel that he senses. Yeah. Right, we like him, we love him, and I'd seen him in something called a uh, offender, and he looked fucking incredible in it. Yeah. The thousand yards there, you know, he he looked the part. The director loved him. The director was French. He was great. What's John that, Stefan. What was his name? The director's name. John G- Stefan Savari. He's done uh, Johnny Mad Dog and a few other things. Yeah. Um, but they were, They didn't want him. Yeah. I was like, fucking why not? It's always the way. They dog wanted they like, fucking Yanks lad. They wanted the. Um, oh, they wanted a few. They had a, they had a list. They had a load of photos after he sent me, and I was like, playing a scout, sir. They wanted. Yeah. To- so oh. I was thinking, this flat, he's a fucking alley. He's, who's that kid who played in um, Looper? Have you ever seen Looper with Bruce Willis? Yeah. What's the fucking, the young version of Bruce Willis called? Joseph, Joseph Levick. Yeah. Is it, was it him? Yeah, yeah. Really? He was one of them, right. And it was also uh, the other one who's round a bend. Fucking, um, I know he's, he, he is round a bend. He, he's another, he played in um, Transformers. Shia LaBeouf, he's a Shia, cracking after him now. Shia LaBeouf. He's fucking brilliant. And so, I know what you mean. I, yeah, yeah. Yes. So Shia was like, I'm, the, I'm like, fucking hell, we're, we're the talking scousers here. But anyway, Joe, but the producer didn't want him. We got him in the end. Brilliant. And I said, well, why don't you want him? He said, because you won't bring any money. Yeah, well, it's, it's a business, isn't it? Because it is. Because if, if you get someone who's a name, then you get people into fucking, you Yeah, know, and that was it. Whatever. So, yeah. But we, we made that decision where we didn't really need, we needed a great movie. And he made that movie, to be fair. So thanks, Joe. Um, and I'll have to have a little watch of it, man, because you still haven't watched he, it. He, he did, he made that movie. I'm but, well, I'm but that was his that was his first Yeah, his lead. first lead, yeah. And that took him to other things to be fucking fair. brilliant, man. Well, he, got, he left Peaky Blinders for that as well. Did he, yeah? Yeah. Oh, brilliant. It's fucking it's it's great to see, you know, people do well, do you know what I mean? Like it's you know, but I mean as I say, to play a lead, like it's not I don't want to just play a lead in you know, I want something that's I don't know. I feel like I'm at a point now where I'm like, all right, well I've sort of ticked most of the boxes that I've wanted ticked. Do you know what I mean, in a way? Yeah. Like, with people who are portraying or, 
you know, so I feel like now I'm like, ah, oh, you know what, I'd love to do something just a little bit, you know, where I'm fucking, it's test me a bit, because I feel like everything else has tested me. Do you, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just something, it's not from a, an egotistic point of view, it's more from a, I don't know, like a fucking story point of view, to tell a good story, but to be at the forefront of it, you yeah. know what I mean? And be like, yeah, listen, there's fucking, Brilliant. but it'll have to be, you know, something that I'm like, ah. Oh. But you know, fucking saying that, I'll take any fucking job if it's yeah. if if I'm fucking skint. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's it, lad. It's a fucking yeah. hard, it's an hard life being an actor, isn't it? Yeah, it can be. I'd like to dedicate this podcast to my stepdaughter Olivia because I I think she's um, she she'd love to to be in the limelight and do stuff like this. So yeah. I, I'd like to ask you a question because we always say this at the end of every podcast. So. What would you say to a young Bobby Schofield coming through the the doors of life? You know, he wants to be an actor. He wants to get on the stage and do things what would uh, you say to them fucking hell that's a deep question lad. it always is the pearl of wisdom it is you are the pearl of wisdom <laughs> <laughs> um, a young me I'd probably just say to um, you know just just try and be yourself man and, and in all honesty get some fucking help get some help because you need it yeah it took me a long time to get help so if you if you're fucking struggling inside and you know, you you not understanding why you know you fucking think you have to you know close the blinds three times because you might get might get run over in the morning or you fucking you've got to repeat your lines to the point of you know sickening or punching yourself. Do you know what I mean? Just get a bit of help. So yeah, for for a younger version of me, be yourself and just get a bit of help, man, and you you know you'll be all right. Brilliant. And with, with that, Bobby, nice one. Thank you, mate. Thank you on. very much. Pleasure.